Have you heard of Adolf Hitler? No. You don't know who he is? No. I'm Ray Comfort. I'm Jewish, and I'm deeply concerned that a generation is forgetting one of the greatest tragedies in the history of the human race. Adolf Hitler sanctioned the murder of 11 million people, including 6 million Jews, through what's commonly called the Holocaust. In Germany, statues of Hitler are forbidden, and his Nazi salute is illegal. And in Austria, if you even deny the Holocaust took place, they'll throw you in jail. Germany so wants to keep alive the memory of that horror, it has mandatory Holocaust education for its children. This is because it's been rightly said that those who forget history are destined to repeat it. Adolf Hitler, what do you know about him? He was, uh, uh, what's it called? Well, he was kind of a president. What do you know about Adolf Hitler? I really don't know anything about it. <laughs> Have you heard of Adolf Hitler? Um, no. <laughs> Never heard of him? No. I vaguely remember him. Who was Adolf Hitler? Um, he was the guy that's in, was he German? I really don't know that much about him. Who was Adolf Hitler? Um. Uh, this guy with the head of mustache. Who was Adolf Hitler? Uh, he was a communist riot leader of Germany. Who was Adolf Hitler? I don't know. You have no idea at all? No. Uh, he was a communist. Um, is he like an actor or someone? He's like something about Holocaust. So tell me what you know about Adolf Hitler? Uh, I don't know anything about him. You ever heard of him? No, I haven't. Who's the guy with the mustache? Um, uh, don't know, I'm sorry. You're about to meet Steve. As you'll see, Steve is a self-proclaimed neo-Nazi who loves Adolf Hitler, hates Jews, and people of dark skin. White people are up here, and then there's the Jews. So the white man is the best man. What's the purpose of man's existence? To get drunk and have a blue mohawk. What was Jesus Christ? Savior. No, he was a Jew. And what did Jews do? What they lie. Christianity is a Jewish trick, but it hasn't tricked me because I'm Greek and I'm smarter than that. Spell the word shop. Shop? S-H-O-P. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Green light. <laughs> See now, if you can make a mistake with something as simple as that, yeah, that just good. think, just think if you're making a mistake when this whole philosophy. You're making a mistake. I don't hate black people because they're black. I hate black people because they're pieces of <laughs> because they ruin every neighborhood they come into because they do bad things to my people because of the color of our skin. This country is and I hate America. Jermaine was written by a bunch of little weak Jews that were like, that couldn't stand up for themselves, so they had to make up a fake God to protect them because they're a weak race. Jesus was a Jew. And if you were in Auschwitz, I'd give him a tattoo. Adolf Hitler was not evil. So who, what do you have to do to be evil? He killed six million Jews and blacks and, and, and gypsies and, and homosexuals? I don't believe that. I think that's a lie. I don't think he killed that many people. I love Hitler. Why? Because he wanted to cleanse the world of non-white races. Although Hitler is the uh, most famous uh, criminal in the world. Don't you think he was evil? Evil? No. No. Who was Adolf Hitler? Uh, the leader of the Nazis. He ran the fascist movement uh, in World War II, right? Good guy? Bad guy? He was intelligent, but he was what he was doing was bad. Have you heard of Adolf Hitler? Yes. Yeah. What did he do? Uh, he killed a lot of people and tried to take over the world. Good guy or bad guy? <laughs> bad. I can ask you this question. It's yeah. not a racist question, but are you German? Bin ein Deutschlander. Can I ask you a question? Have you read Maybe I'm 
I'm saying too yeah. much. I don't know. What'd you think? But, you know, it's a great book. But, dude, I don't know how you sleep at Still is. Do you admire Adolf Hitler? I don't know how you sleep Absolutely. Is he evil? When you know no. Is he evil and he killed Every the Jews? Every trace of your existence is gone. And if what you believe is true, it didn't happen. The Holocaust didn't happen. Who were the killers? The Jews. Don't you understand that America's run by Jews? Don't you understand that? Don't you get it? Don't you grab a hold of it? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? Our king told you what's wrong with it. It'll bring hell on earth, and it has. Look around you right now and see the result of Judaism. Are you nuts? Are you crazy with your hatred? Your hatred? You just hate. You hate. You hate with evil. Stop it. Stop talking like a Jew. You know what Hitler said? As he said, Christianity is a nice religion, but let's let it die out. He put the Jewish people in concentration camps. And he basically uh, brainwashed the whole German civilization into believing that Jews were evil and you needed to get rid of them. He started World War II. It's 1939, you've got a high-powered rifle and Adolf Hitler is in your sights. Do you take him out? Absolutely. Okay. So you didn't hesitate. Would you take him out? <laughs> yes. Okay, it's uh, about 30 years earlier. Um, Mrs. Hitler is pregnant with Adolf. Would you take her out? If I knew what he was going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you shoot him? Immediately. Immediately. I would shoot him and tear him apart. If you go back 30 years earlier and Adolf Hitler's mother is pregnant with Adolf and you've got a high-powered rifle and you had one shot, would you take him out? Would you kill her to kill him? Uh, definitely. definitely. Uh, kill her, kill him, and kill his relatives. Everybody who belongs to Hitler family. Did he kill millions of Russians? Oh yeah, that's not he personally, but German army did millions and millions. Russia lost about 30 million people in the Second World War. Uh, he destroyed, the uh, German army destroyed uh, most of the European part of the Soviet Union. Did you lose any relatives? Oh yeah, I lost my father, my grandmother, my aunt, my brother. Hitler hated Christianity. He called it a disease and once said the heaviest blow which ever struck humanity was Christianity, adding that it was an invention of the Jew. He killed or imprisoned genuine pastors and replaced them with his own Nazi pastors. He also replaced the cross with a swastika, printed a hundred thousand copies of his own twisted Bible, rewrote the Ten Commandments and then created his own Aryan, anti-Semitic, non-Jewish Jesus. But most importantly, all this sprung from the fact that Hitler had created his own image of God and was what the Bible calls an idolater. He had another God before the God of the Bible. Like Judas Iscariot, he professed to be a follower of Jesus of Nazareth, but his motive was for his own evil agenda. And that agenda was very clear. He said, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. Adolf Hitler deceived the youth of Germany. He deceived many within the traditional church, but most of all, he deceived the millions of Germans who believed his lie about the supremacy of the German race. History tells us of one man who was present when the Nazis killed 1,600 Jews on April the 6th, 1942. He witnessed them being shot and then being buried alive. I saw them do the killing. At 5 p.m. they gave the command, fill in the pits. Screams and groans were coming from the pits. Suddenly I saw my neighbor Ruderman rise from under the soil. His eyes were bloody and he was screaming, finish me off. 
A murdered woman lay at my feet. A boy of five years crawled out from under her body and began to scream desperately, Mommy! That was all I saw since I fell unconscious. It's 1943. A German officer has pointed a machine gun at you and told you to get in a bulldozer and drive it forward. You look in front of you, there's a big pit. Hundreds of Jewish families have been shot, and they're in the pit. Many of them are dead, but some of them are still alive. He's telling you to bury them alive. You know that if you say no, he's just going to say, OK, and shoot you with his machine gun. OK, and someone else is going to do it. He's going to do it. Would you do what he says? I don't know. Wow, I think that's a powerful question. If you do what he says, he's going to let you live. Would you drive the bulldozer forward? No. No. Why not? They're going to die anyway. Because I'd rather die not doing that, knowing that I was a cause. Would you drive the bulldozer? Absolutely not. I think I would do it forward only because of um, the fear of, of my own life and feeling, fearing that I, ha I have no other choice. Would you do what he says? Absolutely. I would not. What about you? Would you drive it forward? No, nah, I'd take the shot. Would you do what he says? Probably yes. You just bury those Jews? Yeah, if, I, if it was me or uh, if it was my life, I would probably do that, yeah. I'd do it. Okay, what say the soldier said to you? Look, I don't want you to bury these people alive. I'm just going to give you my gun and you just finish them all off. Just shoot them. Would you do that? No, that would be harder to do. Yeah, that would be something. It's almost more merciful to be shot than buried alive, don't you think? Oh, I think so, yeah. So you wouldn't shoot them, but you'd bury them? Yeah. What's the difference? Because I would think that most of them would be dead. That would be the... the yeah, but difference. there's some still alive. Yeah, I would probably try to put that out of, out of my mind. Would you do what he says? Absolutely not. He may as well shoot me. If he said, uh, take my gun, we've got a dozen officers pointing their guns at you, I want you to shoot those Jews. No, dude, no, no. So you wouldn't shoot them? No. Nah, but you'd bury them? If the... <sighs> well, then I would probably do it just to save myself and my family. If he said to you, I want you to take this machine gun and finish those Jews off, would you do that? No, I wouldn't kill anybody. I couldn't do it. But you're burying them alive, which is worse than being shot with a bullet. You're killing me, man. Um, I, that's a tough decision. Would you do what he wants? Yeah. You just drive it forward? You wouldn't hesitate? No. Would you drive it forward? No. No, I would not. Would you do what he wants? No. Why not? Well, for one, that's not morally right to me. What can one person do if just that one person got out of the bulldozer? You know what I mean? Like, then their life is, is gone too. It's that everyone needed to rise up against him, you know? And I think that's what a lot of people, where was the world, you know? Where, where was everybody, you know? Maybe everybody is made up of individuals that would say, I could never bury human beings alive. I'd rather die than do that. You value life? Of course. So you wouldn't take human life? You, you value human life? Yeah. How do you feel about abortion? Mmm, it all depends. That's a tricky subject. Sounds like you value human life. I do value human life. Alicia, how do you feel about abortion? Uh, I feel that um, it's, a, it's a woman's right to choose and every situation is a different situation. I'm for abortion. You know, that's a tricky situation. Um, I am pro-life. But, you know, until you're, it's really easy from the outside to say, um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But until you're actually in that situation, there's no saying what you will do. I mean, it's really... If you're pro-life, you believe it's a baby in the womb? Absolutely, yes. When does it become a life? Well, it kind of does at the start, but it's not as much until after three months. This is actual footage of a baby in the womb at just six weeks, six days of age. You can clearly see the baby's eyes, hands, and heartbeat. There's a fetus there, not a baby. You don't think it's a baby? Not yet, not until three months. Do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yes. Okay, finish the sentence for me, okay? It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? I don't know. Do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, finish the sentence for me. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? 
if it comes from something that shouldn't have happened. When does it become a life? <sighs> That's a tough one. Well, I know. Here's, here's a question. If, if you're in doubt, okay, I'm a, I'm a construction worker and I see a building and I say to you, I'm just going to blow up that building in a minute. Um, there's a possibility there's somebody in there I just don't know, but I'm going to blow, blow it up anyway. What would you say to me? I'm not sure if there's life in that building or not, but I'm going to blow it up anyway. Have you had an abortion? Actually, yes, I have. Do you feel guilty about it? No. What justifies the killing of a baby in a womb? If you can't support it when it comes out. I think it's better to have a plan. I think it's, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you should definitely give it much, much more thought. It's not something you should, you know, just lightly say, oh, well, let's just go do it, you know? Can you say that's like saying, look, before you bury those Jews alive, just give us some thought and then bury them alive? You see the, see the... Yeah, I see where you're going with this. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of the same thing. Here's you, Frank. You would give your life for Jews who are going to die anyway, and yet you won't speak up against the murder of children in the womb. I would like you to say, that is wrong. To kill a child in the womb, the safest place on earth is a mother's womb, and to actually go in there and destroy a, a human life. Why? For selfish reasons. Depending, I guess, right? I mean, it would depend on the reason. Well, tell me a reason for killing a baby in a womb. Well, I mean, you know, if it's rape or something like that, you know what I mean? Which is, a, I know, a tough decision, but that's mentally, you know, for... Why is it tough? Why would you kill the baby for the crime of the father? Which is worse, murder or rape? You're murdering a child, taking another life because of the crime of the father. Who knows when life begins? I wouldn't know. Do you think God knows when life begins? I think, yeah, probably. And do you know what the sixth commandment is? No, no. It says you shall not kill. So you should say it's never right to kill a child in the womb. And, this, and Hitler declared Jews as non-humans. And that's what you're doing when you're saying, it's not a baby until three months. That's what I think. It's very subjective. And if you're not sure, it's taking a terrible risk with somebody else's life. Imagine if someone said that about you when you were just on three months old and they decided to kill you because of selfish reasons. I wouldn't want other people to judge me, so I wouldn't want to do that to other people. So whatever their decision is, you know, it's, on, it's, up, it's between them and God. It's their baby. Whose baby? The mother. She's got the right to kill it? If she, can't, if she feels she can't take care of it or she... Um... So that's criteria. I can't take care of this. It's going to interfere with my life. I'll kill it. Yes. Wow. Do you value human life? Yeah. Were you a Christian? Um, in a sense, I, I believe in God completely. So what's the sixth commandment? I don't know. You shall not kill. Why would you advocate the murder of a child in the womb if you know God says you shall not kill? You should, you should be dogmatically against the killing of children in the womb. It's the safest place on earth, a woman's womb, so why would you say it's okay to kill children in the womb? There's no way that you're going to change my opinion on this because I believe it is a woman's choice. I just, I personally would not do it, but I believe it should be a choice. You know, there's all sorts of medical problems, there's all sorts of birth defects, whatever. So you know that their quality of life is going to be pretty much restrained into a 9 by 9 hospital room. So you're saying... Do you really think that it, it's fair to kind of live that? You know what I mean? What type of quality of life is that? The Nazis are in front of you. They're going to kill kids with Down syndrome. They're going to kill them all. They did this. Uh -huh. You think that's okay then? No, absolutely not. They've got a bad quality of life. Definitely not. And who's to say that they have a bad quality of life? There's no possible way that that child will have a good life. So why raise that child to have a bad life? How can you make that judgment when the child's not born? Um, I can say that about any child. This child could have a bad life. I think I'll kill it. Oh. What about you? It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? Um... When you're really messed up and you're about to beat that kid or something. We're talking about a holocaust in America, in our country, that's sanctioned by the government. Do you think it's okay to kill kids in the womb? I don't think it's okay. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't think that... Um... But isn't that like what Nazi Germany was about? It's like saying, what Hitler did was wrong. I think it's his choice. I don't think it's okay, but he did it, and it was his choice to do so, and he had the sanction of the German people because they allowed him in, so it's okay, but even though it... You know, I don't agree with it. Can you see it's a similar thing? Uh, I guess when you put it like that, it, it is very similar, yeah. It's very similar to, to say that... Um, I guess me saying that it's okay for someone to choose is the same thing as saying it's okay for Hitler to choose. So you're going to change your stance on it? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely making me think, yeah.
I'd like you to feel like you would in Germany when Jews are being killed all around you. You'd be horrified. And we've got a Holocaust in America where tr real babies are being murdered because of a woman, woman's choice. And it's legal. It's like Nazi Germany. He did it legally. Isn't, he didn't do anything legally wrong. But I think in some situations, it can be necessary. I think do, it, do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yeah. So finish the sentence off for me. Killing a baby in the womb is okay when? Uh, oh, there we go. Never. <laughs> Brittany, I noticed you called it a child. So finish the sentence for me. It's okay to kill a child in the womb when? Well, maybe it's just okay if you adopt it out and just not keep it because if somebody is not ready for it. So you're saying that you're changing your mind about yeah. abortion right now? Yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds bad when you put it in that kind of words. Would you have evoked for someone who was for the killing of children in the womb? No. Well, that's great. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yeah, it's not something I've thought about much, but I figured if I was ever in a situation like that, I'd just give it up for adoption if I couldn't take care of it myself, so, but I've never really thought of it like that, I guess. Isn't that great to give it up for adoption instead of killing it? Yeah. It's a wonderful option, adoption. And just as you felt strongly about the life of Jews, and we need to rise up as one person to speak against it, don't you think we need to do that when it comes to the issue of abortion? I think you have a valid point there. I never think, paralleled those two. Um, the Holocaust and yeah, abortion. Yeah. I feel like it should be allowed because it is a choice, but I feel like it. I personally will not do it. It's just... I I'm making you... So you, could, you wouldn't kill Jews, but it's okay for someone else to kill them? Yes. So what would you say to, to someone like you in Germany that says, well, it's, you should never kill Jews, but I think people should have the right to do it? I don't think... Oh... Because that's what yeah, you said. That, that is what I said, huh? Okay. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, that's, I've just changed my mind about abortion. So you're going to vote differently in future? What? When you do vote? The shiz. Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. So you're changing your mind about abortion? Yeah. When you put it that way, it does change your mind. It's never okay to kill a baby in the womb. Okay, so you're going to change your mind about abortion? Yes, I am. You're going to vote differently in future? Yes, vote against abortion. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when... In my heart, I would say never. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, I have. <laughs> you think it's a Do baby in the womb? Yes. So what justification is there for killing a baby in the womb? Can you think of one? Um, <laughs> for killing a baby in the womb. Um, well, I think everyone's situation is... It, well, give me a situation where you could say, yep, yeah, that's justifiable. You can kill that baby because of... Um, you know what? I can't think of one. Adolf Hitler hated the Ten Commandments and wanted to free people from them. He called the commandments the curse of Mount Sinai and said that the God of the Bible was a tyrant who tells us to do the things we don't want to do. Clearly Hitler didn't like the thought of you shall not kill because it didn't fit into his hate-filled worldview. Although he's an extreme example, it's common practice to have a low moral standard when we free ourselves from the Ten Commandments or when we're unaware of their true meaning. It's encouraging to realize that people are willing to change their minds about abortion. When people see things from a different perspective, they're able to think clearly and often make honest, intelligent choices. As I spoke with people about abortion, a conversation often led to the issue of morals, where morals came from, and ultimately, the issue of the afterlife. Hey, what happens after someone dies? Do you think there's a heaven? Sure, we're gonna go to heaven. Yes, sir. No. I think that that was something, like heaven and hell was kind of made up. Are you afraid of dying? No, I'm not afraid of death. Where are you going when you die? At the Mormon hell. Stephen, what do you think happens when someone dies? Do you think there's an afterlife? Uh, I don't know, probably not. Probably not? So this is all there is? Uh, I think so, yeah. Do you believe God exists? I don't think so, no. If there is a heaven, do you think you get there? Are you a good person? Oh, yeah, for sure. God wouldn't be mad at me. I'm a good person morally. Yeah, I'm a good person. I'd hope so. Yes, sir. I believe in God. I believe in good. I don't do nobody no harm. 
If there's a heaven, do you think you're good enough to go there? Are you a good person? Uh, yeah, I think I'm a good person. Why would you go to hell? Because of my lifestyle I'm living. There is no hell. I don't believe that there is a judgment. You don't? No, I don't believe that. But what's going to happen to Hitler on Judgment Day? He's, he's in hell. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, I don't know. Thousands, I guess. Lies? Lies? Too many to count. Oh, countless. What do you call someone who tells countless lies? A liar? Have you ever stolen something? In my lifetime? Mm-hmm. Sure, of course, yeah. Uh, yes. Sure. What do you call someone who steals things? A uh, thief. So what are you? A liar and a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Absolutely. Sure have. Absolutely. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. I heard you use his name just before, probably about 30 seconds ago, when you talked about lying. Do you realize that's called blasphemy? When you use God's name as a cuss word, it's very serious? Sure, I guess it is, yeah. Now Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever done that, looked at a woman with lust? Shoot me now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I like fornicating, it's fun. Yeah, well, you can like raping and bank robbery. It can be fun, but it's not right. Have you ever looked at a guy with lust? No, I'm gay. I commit adultery about every two minutes, maybe. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Yes. So, Alicia, by your own admission, you're a lying, blasphemous adulterer at heart. And you've got to face God on Judgment Day. And we've looked at four of the Ten Commandments. Oh, my goodness. You had sex out of marriage. Yep. So listen to this, listen to this, David. This is why you don't want to believe in God. You're a self-admitted, lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer, fornicator, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. And the thought of being morally responsible to Him is abhorrent to you, so you deny His existence. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. makes total sense. So John, you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. By your own admission, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a adulterer at heart, a fornicator. Wow. So, a lot. will you go to heaven or hell? From the way it sounds, hell. Does that concern you? Absolutely. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Uh, guilty. Would you go to heaven or hell? Hell. Does that concern you? Yeah. So does it concern you that if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? Not really, no. Well, don't try to change me around. I'm the way I am and I don't give it. You'll be guilty of breaking the commandments. So does it concern you that today, if you died today, you'd end up in hell? Yes. So you're starting to think about your life and how valuable it is? Yes. Does it concern you that if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? I think God's a loving God and, and I think he would, uh, he would see my heart. You know, he does. And he sees a liar and a blasphemer and an adulterer at heart. But if you're, if you're repentant, there's something you can actually do because of God's kindness to have all your sins forgiven. Do you know what God did for sinners? Any idea? He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the earth to, um, to die on the cross for the sinners. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on the Day of Judgment, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Uh, hell. Does that concern you? Uh, yes, it does somewhat. You know, God gave you a conscience so you know right from wrong. You know it's wrong to lie and steal and fornicate and blaspheme. It's written on your heart. Do you understand the legal implications of what he did? God's a judge. In his eyes, you're guilty because you violated his law, the Ten Commandments. You're heading for a place called hell, God's prison, without parole, but Jesus stepped in and paid your fine on that cross. That means God can legally dismiss your case because your fine was paid for by another. I don't know. Don't you think it's funny, though, that God will put a nice guy like me to, in hell? But a criminal might say that to a judge, but the judge will do that which is right, even if it's a nice guy. If he's raped and murdered, he's going to get the books thrown at him. And you've violated God's law, even though you might be a nice guy. You're a self-admitted lying thief, blasphemer, adulterer at heart. God will give you justice, but he's not willing that any perish. He's given you something that says, I don't want to die. Listen to it, man. You've got a cross in the middle of your eyes. Think about what Jesus did on that cross. Think about how much God cares about sinners, that he'd do that. And in the Bible verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And he rose from the dead. And what you've got to do is repent, turn from your sins, trust in Jesus. God will give you everlasting life. He'll forgive your sins. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And the thing that will save you is God's goodness, the Savior, Jesus. He's like a parachute. Turning to a parachute won't save you, but putting it on will. 
And the moment you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the minute you put your trust in him, Alicia, God will forgive your sins, dismiss your case, and grant you the gift of everlasting life. God will forgive our sins, including abortion, and grant us the gift of everlasting life. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes. You gonna think about this? Yes. So if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you have to do to be saved. You've got to repent, not just confess your sins, but turn from them, and trust alone in Jesus Christ. When do you think you'll do that? Well, um, probably as soon as possible. Wouldn't everybody? Do you have a Bible at home? Yeah, I got a Bible at home. Well, would you please think about this? Yeah, of course, sure, sure, why not? Shortly after the war had ended, the American military made those living near the concentration camps go through them. They wanted them to see firsthand what had caused the smoke to billow from the chimneys of those camps and to witness what the leaders that they had allowed it into power had done. Notice their light-hearted demeanor as they entered the camp, obviously unaware as to the horror that had taken place in their own backyard. And look at the change on their faces once they realized what had actually taken place. No doubt there's an abortion clinic near you. Perhaps you should pay them a visit to see what actually takes place behind their walls so that you can witness firsthand what's happening in your own backyard. Over 50 million human beings have been murdered in America's Holocaust, sanctioned by political leaders who have been put into power by the American people. Please, never ever give your vote to any politician who advocates the murder of a child in the womb. So you're going to vote differently and think differently about this? Yeah, I think I would. I think I definitely would. Because uh, you're right. I had just said about the Holocaust, of every, if the, where was the world if everyone would have band together, you know, make a difference. I couldn't have said it better than Alicia. If you need help in any way regarding the issue of abortion, please go to heartchanger.com for details. We would love to get 180 into the hands and homes of every person in America and throughout this whole world. If you feel the same, we need your help now. Please go to heartchanger.com for details. Thank you. Okay, here I am at Huntington Beach, beautiful Huntington Beach. Steve Sanchez, our friend, threw down the gauntlet when he watched a video by Eddie Roman, our producer, where Eddie gave out 10 copies of 180 in nine minutes. Steve went, oh, I can give out 12 copies in two minutes, and he did. So let's see if I can beat Steve by giving out 15 copies in one minute. This is an award-winning movie that's just been released. I want to see how quickly I can give away 15 copies. Are you ready, Scotty? I'm ready. Show, Show me your watch. Come and grab them. Okay. Okay, we're awake. It's time to go. Just one each. It's only 15 copies, so be quick. There you are. That's it. Thank you, folks. So, Steve Sanchez, you just got smoked. <laughs> One eighty has taken the internet by storm. Its strong pro-life message has resonated with many people and it continues to challenge the hearts and minds of new viewers each day. You can help to get it before the eyes of the world by taking the time to do a few simple things. Firstly, if you haven't yet watched 180, please do so by clicking the play button at 180movie.com. The documentary is free, there's no charge to watch it online. To access subtitles in a variety of different languages, click on the YouTube button. 
This brings up the YouTube interface where you can select the closed caption that is CC button. Subtitles in English as well as many other languages can be selected here. After you watch the video, please click like on the YouTube interface and make it one of your favorites. This increases the visibility of 180. At 180movie.com, you can share 180 via Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and email. This only takes a moment, and it can make the difference between life and death for many unborn human beings. On Facebook, type 180movie into the search bar to find the 180 movie page. Once here, please click like. The more likes we get, the more chances others will want to watch 180 out of curiosity. Be sure to post the movie on your wall and share it with as many people as possible. Giving a like to any comments regarding 180 increases its visibility on the Facebook pages of other people. If you use Twitter, the official hashtag is pound180movie. Please use that when you tweet about 180. Our account is at 180movie. These simple actions only take a moment, but make a huge difference in the promotion of 180. Together, we can make a difference for the sake of the unborn and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.